Whether crypto advanced or unspeakably new, Bitcoin.com has a wallet for you. Okay, on the line I have Theo Chino, but I don't know if I, is it pronounced Theo or Tio? Uh, it's pronounced however you want to put those letters together, so I'm okay with anyway because. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, you you are a. Um, I guess what I would describe as an upstart entrepreneur in New York fighting the bit license is the thing you're best known for. Yes. All accurate? Okay. Uh, I'm going to take that as yes. Um, uh, 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 je ne parle pas bien français, mais vous parlez français, oui? Oui, je parle français, effectivement, oui, exactement. Vous êtes de France? Hello, 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 Dave, Dave, can you hear me? Yes. Because it's cutting out, actually. Oh. So I'm so, yes, I'm hearing you and you go in and out, so I... Oh, okay. Is it, hold on, is it my computer or is it your computer? I don't know. I don't know, but I hear you fine. Okay. Et vous êtes de, vous êtes de France, oui Français de France, exact, effectivement. Je suis, je suis désolé, je ne parle pas, je ne parle pas bien. Mais merci. Ah, mais, et, mais, ok. Et vous parlez euh, aussi euh, Nihongo? Non. Oh, ok, ok. Uh, all right, and um, you've, you've, uh, were, um, you were, you've been in New York for a long time, though, correct? Yes, uh, I, I think my mother was from New York, where she's Dominican from New York, and so I came here when I was three months old, then I went back to France to study under the French system, and then I came back when I was 17. Okay, all right. What so would you... I did... What? You're, you're, you're... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, you, you... Your your other big thing is, and this is near and dear to my heart, is how you you uh, you really like to raise hell uh, when someone gets arrested over Bitcoin. Yes, and the 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 thing is that all those arrests over Bitcoin seems to be out of nothing because nobody understands anything, and uh, so every time I hear there is an arrest, I jump into it to look at how Bitcoin was used in that arrest and whether they use Bitcoin as the reason to declare someone suspicious. What's your take on the Michigan arrest, uh, STEQ? Have you been following that very closely? Oh, yes. I already contacted... Uh, well, the, the thing is, uh, the arrest in Michigan seems to follow the same pattern we saw with Espinosa in Florida. We saw with Morpheus, now we see with Morpheus in, in Arizona. And the, the guy in Michigan uh, is exactly the same, it seems to be the same pattern. So one thing that is happening is that um, the, the, the public defender from the Michigan case come from the same office <coughs> as the public defender in Morpheus case. Wait a minute, how can that be if they're so far apart? Well, it's a federal program, so it's a federal defendant. So they they have offices. The F, the federal defendant office have office all over the United States. So just to even get to his client, the guy has to go across the United States. No, no, they're the same office. It's a national. It's a national organization. Oh, uh, same office, but not same person. Yes, no, oh, same. Okay. Same uh, is the defendant <coughs> service office. Uh, is the defender service office and so basically they belong to the same big organization so since they're inside the same organization I just got in the lawyer from Michigan to contact the lawyer from Arizona to okay. say hey talk to each other because you have a Bitcoin case yeah and nobody understands these things yet yeah exactly and so this is what uh, what I did basically is get them together to see once they get together they will discover the truth but the thing is they need to know each other exists 
Well, you mentioned a pattern. Uh, what would you say is the pattern? How would you define or describe the pattern that is developing in U.S. Bitcoin arrests by feds? Well, they seem to do the same thing. They go on localbitcoin.com. They start like, oh, let's find out, you know, let's sort this thing by who does the most transaction. Then let's go see what this guy is about. Then let's do a transaction with him. Let's start asking him questions. Uh, and then let's start to, to try to reel him in like a fish. Oh, let's give him a $3,000 deal. Let's do a $10,000 let's do a hundred thousand dollar and <laughs> let's arrest him so I mean this is what's surprising is they do spend what they I think what they're trying to find is the next you know the next uh, uh, Silk Road basically and because <coughs> the, the the Silk Road case was so big people were like oh we're going to you know they want to find the next big, the next Silk Road, and the next Silk Road could be anywhere in the United States or anyone in the world. Someone is running it, so they don't have to be in a big community. So every FBI agent is like, or any law enforcement is like, "Hey, what happened if the next Silk Road is in my little town? Let's try to find it." And it's easy: go on local Bitcoin, find out who's the one who sells the most Bitcoin. And let's follow them up. What would you say, I mean, assuming that the pattern does not change too much over the next year or two, which it, it might, but let's just say the pattern continues, what would you, what would you say is, what are the easiest ways a person can avoid being the target of one of these arrests and still, you know, do Bitcoin? Well, that's, the, that's what we're, we're talking about. There is no way. I mean, following the law are so constraining that you cannot do Bitcoin and not be the target of an arrest. That's unfortunately the reality. Uh, you, 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 they, because they, they, they it's, it all depends on the nature of Bitcoin. So I believe Bitcoin is one thing. I believe Bitcoin is an intangible commodity. It's a commodity. The same way as you have oil, you have, you have anything, gold. It's a commodity. The government, because of the FinCEN rule, has said, no, it's money. And this question has not been answered yet. And this is what Morpheus' case will answer. Is, is Bitcoin money, yes or no? And once that is defined, we can look at the laws and say, wait, if it's not money, you cannot treat it as money. You cannot ask people to be compliant with KML. You cannot be, because that would be sounding ridiculous. It's like you go on a, you would sell your used car, like you have a used car, like the 1970 Mustang convertible that is worth twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. You don't have to do AML, KML if you're going to sell your Mustang. I mean, <laughs> this is what we're talking about. Is, is what, if Bitcoin is money, then if you do a business, you have to follow KML. If Bitcoin is done money, then you have to follow what rules that will be written in the future. And that's what the fight is about. What would you say are some of the arrests that have uh, happened over the last year that have fallen through the cracks that no one else seems to be noticing but you? Well, Randall Lord, for example, in, in Louisiana. Uh, that's, a, that's one that fell in the crack because the thing is, if Ernest hadn't published something on on the on one of he didn't know someone who knew someone in the paper here in New York, I would have never seen Morpheus' case. And most of the case I hear about Bitcoin is when the Justice Department prints out their press release saying, "Oh, so and so of a Bitcoin has been indicted or pled guilty." And those people pled guilty doesn't mean they're guilty. It's just that the system is so overbearing that they prefer to plead, to plead guilty than to just fight it because it takes a lot of effort. And Morpheus is paying the price of, those, of that effort. I mean, being sitting there for six months, it's, it's a big deal. Yeah, and those for listeners who are not familiar, Morpheus is an Arizona Bitcoiner coiner who was active in the Ron Paul movement and part of freedomsphoenix.com. 
and he was uh, the reason he's been in jail for so long is because he was labeled a, f- a flight risk for I guess missing a court hearing a long time ago. Is that correct? About yes, it was that, and also about talking about uh, the thing is before the election, Morpheus, was a friend of him and him, were talking on the phone over moving to Mexico. And so they wiretapped his discussion of possibly moving to Mexico, and that's why. They, they're calling him a, a flight risk? Also, yes. And because uh, he's a dangerous person. They found a bullet in his house. <clears throat> and he was a felon. <laughs> and all those things together, when you take them out of context, well, yes, he's a dangerous felon talking about moving to Mexico. Uh, just after, just before the election, uh, for, you know, taking out of context, that's the reason the judge has been holding him. Yeah. And and the public defense, I mean, at the beginning, they thought it was, uh, you know, people people think it was a small case. The public defender didn't know what Bitcoin was. Uh, you know, all those things together. And so, yes, he's sitting in jail for the last six months. He has been sitting in jail for six months now. So, technically, that makes him a political... <laughs> because I, I feel Bitcoin is very political, so that makes him a political activist in jail in Arizona. Oh, he's like he's like uh, Fela Kuti uh, in uh, Nigeria. If you remember him, he was a he was an Afro pop star, you know, back in the seventies and eighties. I really enjoyed his music back in the day, <clears throat> and you know, they arrested him. He said things in his songs that somebody didn't like, so they arrested him for what? currency trafficking what on the earth is currency trafficking i used to think you know back in the 80s it never occurred to me that all of us could be at risk for for such charges well i mean i don't know him but yeah those are things that you know before bitcoin i never i mean i never realized what was going on before bitcoin and i consider myself pretty mainstream so i don't pay attention to everything that goes on so I don't look into, you know, the, the, I consider myself political, but not, I never realized how crazy he was, the system. Yeah, and you and, understand, you understand it well. I mean, I've never heard anyone explain the New York system as simply and uh, easy to listen to as you have. Well, thank you. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm working on making it easier to, but... The thing is, when I learned, I discovered Bitcoin, I was part, I mean, I was, I'm part of a political machine in France, and I came about as a computer guy and say, hey, we discovered Bitcoin, let's talk about it, let's see what this thing, this seems to be the thing of the future. And within my party, I, I am a socialist French, so I'll say it publicly, I mean, there is no hiding. <laughs> and the, the thing is, when I talk to them, and say, let's see what this thing is, everybody labeled me as a crazy man, as everything. I was everything and everything. And over time, <laughs> the, the people were like, no, Theo might not be that crazy, because we keep hearing about it, we keep, uh, but it took two or three years worth of explaining since 2013 to the French political system what Bitcoin was. Well, you know, what, I, what I'm discovering is something similar, is that I, I have been trying to give away tiny amounts of Bitcoin, you know, to friends and family and so forth. And I can't get much of any of them to take it. Well, Morpheus, well, I mean, this is where Morpheus is going to tell you, you're wrong. You cannot give it away. You need to sell it to them. You sell them a dollar worth of Bitcoin, you sell them, but you have to sell it. Interesting. Never give it away. Yeah. And... And I've done that by mistake. I was playing in France with another political guy, who, like me, who lives in uh, who lives in the eastern country. I think he lives in Vienna. I think it's Vienna. I'm not sure, but he lives over there. And I sold him forty cents worth of Bitcoin. We were laughing and we were like discussing it. And I go here, give me forty cents. And I gave him forty cents worth of Bitcoin. And up to this day, three years later, he keeps. He has the application in his phone, and when we see each other every year, he always tells me, "Hey, my Bitcoin is worth a dollar and forty cents," and it's funny. 
And it's funny to see that Morpheus, and I, I sold it to him by, because I was trying to explain to him the whole, the whole deal. But I, it was the, I didn't, I didn't realize until Morpheus told me, you have to sell it to people. Because I was doing like you, I was giving it away. And the guy who keeps going at it and looking at those 40 cents is the guy who I sold it to. Yeah, and Morpheus okay. was right. Okay, that makes sense. Like, yeah, that makes sense actually in a counterintuitive sort of way. Exactly, I know it's counterintuitive, but I love, so, you know, it's funny because Morpheus is in jail. And we laugh every time we talk on the phone. We 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 laugh so much about the the, the stuff we we do. I mean, he tells me, "Yeah, you have to understand, Theo, you're doing it wrong." And I'm like, and suddenly I remember the first guy I sold Bitcoin to, and he goes, "Yeah, you're right. He's the only one who comes back and tells me about his forty cents. How ridiculous and counterintuitive it is." So, <laughs> I mean, it's it's incredible. So like don't, to, don't give it away. Sell them away. I'd like <laughs> to talk a little bit about the uh, the court event. Uh, in it was in Manhattan or Brooklyn or no, in Manhattan. Yeah, okay. it's a state court, so it's a local court where you were challenging the uh, <clears throat> the bit license. You sued, um, and uh, the the event itself was you know they were they were arguing in favor of dis uh, the. the the, the defendants, you know, the, the government was arguing to dismiss the case, but uh, yeah. I, mainly the decisions got uh, got kind of pushed back, I guess. Um, so I guess what I'd like to ask is what what it, what it was like in court, how long it lasted, what what the what the demeanor of the government people was. Well, it's pretty funny actually because the the government is a big entity, and the, the the thing is, he lasted for an hour and a half. I mean, he lasted quite a bit. I mean, it's not the 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 hear, This is the first. Technically, this is a hearing. This is the second hearing, and this hearing was just about whether or not we will discuss at the next hearing whether or not Bitcoin is money or not. And so the so the the the, the, the judge. The, the, the government, the thing is, there is two portions of the government. There is the entity that created the bid license, which is the New York State Department of Financial Services, which has their own lawyers, and they're specialized in financial stuff, we'll call it. And on the other hand, you have the attorney general, and the attorney general is the lawyer of all the departments of the state of New York. So regardless what department you are in, you are defended by the attorney general. So the same way the public defender that defending Morpheus, it's a federal entity, it's, a fe it's part of the government, it's a different part of the government that attacks you. So the attorney general is there to be the lawyer of all the department of New York, of the state of New York. And what's funny is the state of New York, the attorney general is busy because he has to defend all the lawsuits that people have against the government. So, basically, the Department of Financial Service is a customer of the Attorney General, like the Department of Health, the Department of Motor Vehicles, the Department of all those departments. The NYDFS is just a customer of the AG. So the AG can only give the Department of Financial Service a certain amount of attention. And so the Department of... <laughs> It was, I, I felt like the NYDFS lawyer wanted to strangle the AG. Yay! For not being, <laughs> for, because the, 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 the lawyer from the NYDFS is not allowed to talk. He's, not, he's just a defendant. He's just like me. We <laughs> sit in the back of the courtroom, and we have to let our lawyer talk. <clears throat> well, it's just like and, uh, it was either Gary North or Vladimir, Vladimir Bukowski, I think, who he, he was writing about. I may have the name wrong. Uh, who, 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 he's, he, one of the two said the, the, the bureaucrats always hate each other. We can always play that to our advantage. So Bukowski, when he was in the gulag, he found this arcane rule that every Soviet official had to answer a complaint if you made a complaint. So he created like yep. an industry inside that prison of, of copying 
and writing complaints, and they had they had half the prisoners working on it practically, and it and everyone and so they were writing complaints to everyone who was anyone in Soviet society, actors, uh, you know, union leaders if they even had unions, I don't remember. It was like they completely created a nightmare for the Soviets, and uh, so that's <laughs> it, it's good to see that happening in the United States too a little bit, a little bit of bureaucrats well, hating on each other. Yes, well, the thing is, articles. The thing is, if you, the problem I have, for example, if you Google Article Seventy Eight on Google, most of the Article Seventy Eight you'll see has to do with prisoners. You know, like prisoner this, prisoner that. When you have a complaint against the warden, you have to file an Article Seventy Eight, which is the complaint article that I use against the New York D DFS for the, you know, for the bid license. And so <laughs> it's, it's very hard to, to understand that. And yes, it, that's how it works. I mean, if I didn't intend to make it. I didn't know. All, I'm learning as I go along, to tell the truth. I mean, I'm, I'm just documenting what I'm discovering as I'm doing it. So I didn't know Article 78 until there was a Bitcoin license. And I didn't know you could do that this way. And I didn't know the AG was the only one allowed to defend. And now that makes sense why the judge, the first hearing, was mad at the government. Because the, in, the, in one of the hearings, she goes, oh, why did the NYDFS answer this? They were not supposed to answer that. Mm. And she the said, AG, I will not the look a, at those The AG's answers. office is supposed to answer it for them? Yeah, the AG <laughs> was supposed to answer, but the NYDFS <laughs> answered question of law that they were not it's like me I'm not supposed to to know the law my lawyer is in a way so even though I know I'm not supposed to my affidavit are not supposed to contain lawful thing you know mention of the law my affidavit has to contain only the fact when and you... NYDFS tried to put law you know to put the fact but also to cite law case that they were not supposed to cite. And the judge caught up on that. Why does the world look like this? Well, it's because you're using these instead of these. Admittedly, so am I sometimes. But if you're not using Bitcoin yet, you're missing the boom of the century. So, go to Bitcoin.com, get their free wallet, find out what it's like to be in a free market. Whether crypto advanced or unspeakably new, Bitcoin.com has a wallet for you.